in a universe of liquids, Jupiter's moon Europa appears to be an unlikely place to find some. It's an arctic wasteland, sheathed in water ice and riddled with cracks. It's like looking down on ice flows in the Arctic or Antarctic. You see cracks that have been just offset from one another and uh, suggesting that the surface is kind of floating around on top of a liquid underneath. And it's not just a splash of water, either. Beneath a layer of ice 60 miles thick lies an ocean 60 miles deep. That's deep. That's a lot of drilling you would need to do if you're going to go ice fishing on Europa. Smaller than our moon and nearly three times farther away from the sun, as tiny Europa orbits, it passes through Jupiter's magnetic field. But it's another mighty Jovian force that keeps a world so far from the sun from being frozen solid. It gets energy from the gravitational tug of Jupiter. Jupiter is very massive, and it pulls tides on Europa much the way the moon pulls tides on Earth. Jupiter's gravity teems with the tugging and shoving of the other satellites in nearby orbit to mash and stretch Europa. The resulting friction heats and melts the moon's interior. What's left, ground up inside Europa, is salt water. It's mainly H2O, plain old water, but dissolved in it are salts and other materials, just like our ocean has salts and minerals and things dissolved in them. The best analogy for the uh, water on Europa would be water from the Dead Sea in uh, Israel, where you have a very, very high concentration of salt. Not a good place to get your bottled water from. Liquids can turn up in the most unexpected places. And none may be more surprising than a recently discovered liquid nearly as old as time itself. 14 billion years ago, the universe began as an infinitesimally small point when it erupted in a cosmic explosion known as the Big Bang. It rushed outward, expanding and expanding, exotic particles and gases cooling and coalescing into stars, then solar systems and galaxies. But let's rewind the clock to a time just after the Big Bang, before protons and electrons combined to form the first atoms. So everything was running into each other and smashing into each other, so that what was going on was that there wasn't enough uh, freedom for the particles to sort of settle down and, and clump into the things that we're familiar with now. The early universe was like a featureless desert, burning at a temperature of a million billion degrees. A random collection of particles known as quarks and gluons. Quarks and gluons are the fundamental constituents of the nuclei that make up our atoms. Actually, in the first 10 millionth of a second of the lifetime of the universe, there was a phase of the universe where it was all quarks and gluons. New simulations of the conditions of the early universe have revealed that the individual quarks and gluons were not flying about randomly as a gas, as would be expected in those conditions. Instead, they were connected and flowing like a liquid. A really good example of this is sand. What I have here is a, a handful of sand, and it's, it's made of lots of little particles, uh, which are essentially like tiny rocks or stones. But how they interact with each other is what determines how lots of them move together to give you something that's much more like a fluid flow than it is the behavior of a solid. And so much the same thing is going on with quarks and gluons in that situation where they're colliding. And that was probably the same sort of behavior that was going on in the very early universe. You'll see patterns in the sand that look like ripples on the surface of an ocean in response, for example, to the wind, and responding in a way that's much more fluid-like or liquid-like than it is as a solid. Ripples are traces left behind by some kind of disturbance in a liquid state of matter, ripples spread easily throughout the hole. 
that ability to communicate disturbances may have some imprint on the ultimate fate of the universe. In that critical, chaotic moment after its creation, the fluidity of our early universe's liquid state was already beginning to show signs of a grand future. So there'll be some parts of the fluid that are slightly more dense than other parts, and we'd be able to see patterns beginning to form that will ultimately become the structure that we see in the late universe. Fluid motion is stitched into the fabric of space and time. So the next time you sip soda through a straw, dive into a pool, or watch raindrops sprinkle into puddles, know that you are witnessing our universe when it is most alive.